Welcome to Dip into Papermaking with Arnold Grummer. Arnold Grummer is past curator of the Dard Hunter Paper Museum and author of five books on papermaking. Here's Arnold Grummer. Well, let's show and discuss a dip hand mold. We have one here. Dip hand molds will have these particular uh, pieces or their equivalent. Every hand mold is going to have some kind of a screen upon which you can form the sheet. They will have some kind of a decal that usually goes on top of the screen. Many will have some kind of a support uh, grid such as this or its equivalent. And with those items, you're ready to go. The assembly of the kit is quite simple. The screen goes on top of the grid and the decal on top of the screen. Now we're ready to dip this into a vat full of pulp which brings to mind the fact that we have to have a vat full of pulp. How do you get that? Well, to get a successful sheet on here of the right thickness, not too thick, not too thin, one has to have a certain ratio of water to fiber in here. If it's uh, too thin, you'll get too thin a sheet. If it's too thick, you'll get too thick a sheet. So we are suggesting this formula that works very well. This is an eight and a half by 11 sheet. If you use this with four cups of water, your uh, ratio in your vat is going to be just about right. So let's do that. We have at this point taken four of these sheets, recycled them in the blenders we're going to show you in a moment, and with four waters, four cups of water in each case. So that we have in here. Now we want five sheets all together for a vat this size. Regardless of the size of vat that you use, if you get two inches deep of pulp in it, you'll be able to handle a dip kit like this. So to get that two inches, we're going to recycle one more eight and a half by 11 sheet. I kind of like this waste paper. You can use new pulp if you like, and you disperse that in a blender in the same way. Frankly, if you take new pulp, lay it out and dry it, this is what you have. So any paper is pulp, and we're going to use this paper. It's used often for cushioning things in shipping, and it's a real fine fiber. I like the way it works when we recycle it. So you tear the pa uh, paper up, and a good way to do that is tear it, put it together, tear it again. A lot of people tear one piece off at a time. <laughs> it takes like three years to get this torn out. But if you tear it, put it together, and tear it up like that, and put it in your blender, that's fine. Now we're going to add four cups of water, which keeps the right ratio that we were talking about to three, four. Now, this is not exactly rock music that you're going to hear now. This is going to run the blender. We turn the blender on, and I use about a medium speed because that's about the right amount of mechanical action and uh, not too fast. So we'll turn that on. And there goes our blender. Now, you can watch through the side of the blender and see when there aren't any little pieces left. Then you have turned that paper back to the pulp from which it was made. 30 seconds should take just about any paper you can find and turn it back into the pulp. Find the off button there, and there we are. Now we have turned the paper that you saw back into the pulp, and that we will add to the vat. Now, as I said, we have a total of five, eight and a half by 11 sheets with four cups of water for each one when we recycled it. That gives me the two inches that I need, and we're ready to dip a sheet, which is the really exciting part about paper making. So as we said, grid, screen on top of it, decal on top of that, and we're ready to go. Oh, just before we do that, let me point out, if you have a screen of this quality, and uh, all of our kits, uh, we have the same screen that's used on a $250 million paper machine. Now, that's a fabulous substance, and there isn't anything better anywhere. But you have to take care of it right. And one of the things that is very good to do is to scrub the screen and make sure it is wet all over. Uh, that will assure you of a very good sheet formation. Now, we'll put it back on the grid, as we did before, put that on top of there, and we are ready to dip a sheet. There are several ways you can handle this hand mold in relation to the pulp that you have in there. 
Uh, ah, the first thing you have to do is to get the pulp absolutely evenly distributed, and that is exceedingly important. You will not have good results if you don't get this uh, evenly distributed, the fibers in the pulp evenly distributed. So now we have that done. We take this, drop it down vertically all the way to the bottom, pull the bottom gently toward us, and drop the back, and there we are. When we drop the back, the pulp sort of folds and flows over the uh, hand mold, and at that point, you lift it up, and there you are. You have all the water draining down through the hand mold, and all the fibers caught on your screen, and you have formed a beautiful sheet of paper. Let's just take a little look at it right there. That, as soon as you get the water out of, will be a dry sheet of paper that you can write on, type on, draw on, or wrap with. Now, we'll put this here and carefully lift the decal off, and we are ready to remove some water. We will leave it on the grid, the support screen, and use that as sort of a drain rack. Now, I have a tray here. You don't absolutely need a tray, but it does help you control water. You could put this right on the surface of a table whose top is not bothered by water. Now, we have in our kits a cover screen, which you can put over the mat of wet fibers to protect it, and you have a marvelous water removal system in the form of a sponge. If you get a sponge, get a good one. There are those that work well, those that don't. To remove water, take the sponge, put it flat on top of the cover screen you have put down, take your whole hand on top, push down, and let up. That removes a lot of water. Many people go dibbity-dab-dab-dab like that and remove practically no water whatsoever. But this is the fast, efficient, good way to do it. And look at the water that you are removing, that's quite a bit. And there's more there. I would go over this three times at this point because this is the easy way to get rid of water. Other and later methods uh, are going to cost you a lot of work. So here's the point uh, where you can get rid of a lot of water with your sponge. So don't spare the application of the sponge to the mat of wet fibers. Now we have that done. Oh, yeah, wring your sponge out frequently as I'm doing so that it can continue to pick up water. Now, if we can get down and take a quite close look at this, we will peel this screen off like that. And I would peel it off rather than lifting it straight up. And there we have the sheet that we're working on. Now, we need this sheet off of that screen so we can press it. We can't press it on there. It's uh, too weak to lift off. So what we're going to do is pooch it off. And that requires some kind of a material. With our kit, we have something called a press and dry cloth. And that will cooch or remove the amount of wet fibers from the screen for us. So we will put that down there, put the press and dry cloth over it like that, and turn the screen and the press cloth upside down, flat on the table like that. And now we're going to apply pressure again to get that mat of wet fibers to migrate from the screen to the press cloth. If you're going to apply pressure, use your sponge, because in addition to applying pressure, you will probably remove some water, and that will be very good indeed. So again, we apply the sponge with that same flat hand using the entire area of the sponge and press in that fashion. All right, I would go over it twice because, again, this is the simple and easy way to get rid of water. In addition to applying the pressure, that's what you're doing. And there we are. Now here again, if we're going to take a good close look at this corner here, we'll show you something. When you raise this, the mat has migrated from the screen onto the press cloth. That's good. Now, sometimes it will come up with that. If it does, try the other corners. At one corner, this will probably occur. If that does not, take your thumbnail and sort of tease the sheet off, and that way you can get the mat of wet fibers off the screen. Again, peel off. Don't go zip like that because you can ruin the sheet there. Now we're ready for pressing. For that, we use the other 
press cloth, put it down on top like that, and we apply pressure. How you apply pressure here, the fibers you don't really care. You can put a board on here and stand on it, uh, have your friend back his car on it, whatever. Pressure is the point. Uh, I have cut a little piece of wood here that's just right for my hand, and that works really well, and you can really lean on it. Uh, before I had this, I used a book inside a plastic sack. That makes a very good press bar also. So there's no shortage of things with which you can apply pressure, such as I'm doing here, and give it all the pressure that you can. So we are removing some more water. Now, at this point, we are ready to dry the sheet. Uh, we can dry the sheet in several ways. We're going to dry with an iron. You can take your iron and turn it up uh, to a, as high a heat as is possible without having the iron stick on the cloth. Now, there's a variation in irons. This one I can turn up to its maximum heat, and it works beautifully. Uh, others you turn up to about three-fourths and so forth. But you'll find that out as you work with it. Also, you can use your ironing board. That is an ideal uh, surface upon which to do this if you don't have that. We've made a simple little ironing board uh, for portability. We have a cloth over a piece of wood and tape on. Very simple and it's easy to do. You can do that also. So we'll take our wet sheet, put it here like this, have the iron up to the maximum heat that is compatible with what we're trying to do, and put it on there, and not move it too fast. If you move it too fast, you will not get heat down to the sheet, which is what you're trying to do. If you see steam coming up, I don't know whether you can see the steam or not, you're doing all right, because you're getting the water so hot in that sheet that it's boiling and turning into steam. Uh, that gives you a good standard by which to judge whether or not you're getting rid of any of the moisture. So when you get it started like this, you can move it a little bit more rapidly because you do have the sheet heated, so to speak. And as long as the steam is coming up, you are removing water. Now, another thing that happens, uh, you may or may not be able to see it, the sheet gets light as it dries. So you can see light and dark areas as you're doing this. And that tells you about where you are in relation to drying the sheet. Um, how long does this take? Well, the question uh, relies pretty much upon how thick the sheet is. Obviously, the thinner your sheet, the more rapidly you're going to be able to dry it. The more thick the sheet, the more time it's going to take to dry it. So generally speaking, if you are going to dry with an iron, don't make your sheet too thick. All right, now let's take the press cloth off and put the iron down directly on the sheet. And there we are. And again, now we've got more steam coming up. Uh, there are some light spots uh, starting to show up in the middle, meaning that we are moving the drying along very, very good. And I'll tip this up and maybe you can get a close look at what we mean when we say there are dry spots there. You can see perhaps the dry area there. So you know where you are as you're applying this heat. Now to speed things up more, we will now remove the second press cloth, put this directly on our ironing board. And in no time at all, we will now have a sheet that we can write on, type on, draw on, or wrap with. One thing about drying with heat, when you throw 250 degrees of heat or so into this kind of a situation, uh, things shrink. So there's a vast shrinkage forces going on in the sheet that we're looking at here. And they don't all pull at the same direction or at the same rate of force or anything. So one thing that's standard in drying with heat is what we call curl and cockle. You'll see some of that in the sheet here. Uh, there are a number of ways that you can get the sheet flatter. You can use your iron uh, to achieve a uh, uh, less curled sheet, like this, for instance, if you put that there and sort of hold this up. 
you can straighten the sheet out. Also, if you take your sheet when you have finished and have it dry and have admired it, you can put it inside a heavy book or under a heavy book for uh, overnight or so, and you'll have a nice, smooth, even sheet. But even here, with this, you have a sheet that you can indeed be proud of. And let's take a look at it right here. Just notice the crinkle and the crackle. It talks to you. Isn't that beautiful? Can you write on it? Certainly you can write on it, type on it, draw on it, or wrap with it. So with the dip mold, you have made a sheet of paper.